Welcome to the Longest Turn Board Gaming Podcast. This is Snapshot Episode 7. My name is Tyler. Hi, this is Logan. In this Snapshot episode, we take a quick look at the game Dune Imperium. We'll give a short overview of the rules, theme, what we like about the game, and where you can find it. Is this game a good fit for your friends and family? Stick around to get our thoughts because we're ready to jump into Dune Imperium. So if you are new to Snapshot episodes, we do a quick 10 to 15 minute overview of a game we really enjoy playing. Kevin and Tyson did the last Snapshot, number six, The Lost Ruins of Arnak. I brought on my son, Logan, to help with this one since he appreciates Dune Imperium for the masterpiece that it is. Let's jump into the rules. Dune Imperium is designed by Paul Denon and published by Direwolf, with art done by Clay Brooks, Brett Nienberg, Raul Ramos, and Nate Storm. It brings Frank Herbert's Dune to life. Dune Imperium is a deck-building worker placement game with intrigue and influence. Each player starts with one water resource, two agents, and an asymmetric leader that has two unique abilities. Scarce water, spice, and money are the main resources of the game. Players will take turns taking agent actions by playing a card from their hand of five cards. Cards have one or more symbols on them that specify the locations on the board where the player may deploy their agent. Between the unoccupied locations on the board where the agent is sent and any abilities on the card played, there are a large variety of different actions and rewards, such as Players can harvest spice or gain other resources, draw additional cards, spend spice to buy troops, or sell spice for money. There are locations where you spend your money to increase your deck building buying power, get an extra agent, buy troops, or otherwise use your financial influence. Some locations let you deploy troops to the combat. There are also four alliance tracks and unique locations associated with each of them. They are the Emperor, Spacing Guild, Bene Gesserit, and Fremen. As agents are sent to those locations, you begin to influence those factions and gain alliances with them, earning you victory points. When a player is out of agents or chooses to, instead of an agent turn, they will do a reveal turn. They will reveal the rest of the cards in their hand, gain any applicable rewards, assign their total battle strength through the end of round combat, and purchase new cards to add to their deck if they choose. Once all players have revealed, intrigue battle cards may be played and the combat winner is determined and rewards are received. The round is cleaned up by retrieving agents, soldiers who fought are removed, additional spice may be added to the board, a new starting player is assigned, players draw their new hand, and a new conflict card is revealed. The game end is triggered after 10 rounds or when a player makes it to 10 points. Whoever has the most points at the end of that round wins. That's a quick overview of the rules. Let's get back to the table and discuss this masterpiece of a game. So, Logan, we've played this game a lot, head-to-head. The theme is obviously Frank Herbert's Dune IP, but aside from bringing Dune to life and making you feel like you've got sand in all the wrong places, what do you think about the theme of this game? I really like it. uh, I think it definitely adds on to the experience of the game. Uh, One thing that I always thought was really cool is that on each one of the cards, there's like a separate name or separate picture um, linking to something in the Dune storyline. And and every time I play this game, it always just makes me think I want to watch the movie. <laughs> cool. So I've, I've dabbled a little in the books. I think you've just seen the movie. Uh, and I think it is cool how the cards do bring the characters and the, the scenery of the movie to life. I think they do, did an excellent job of kind of bridging that gap between the new movie and this board game and bringing Arrakis to life. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Or what's something you really like about Dune Imperium? So, in general with board games, I'm kind of a stickler for uh, asymmetric powers. I really like that in games. Um, I thought you were going to say for rules. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, but in this game, one thing that I really enjoy is that um, the asymmetric powers, I feel, are very balanced. There's not one leader that's like, oh, this is obviously more powerful than the others. And another thing I like, there are some games um, like Root, for example, where your asymmetric abilities determine one play style for you, and there's no other effective play style. In this game, your asymmetric abilities don't really influence your play style that much they might influence how you go about doing a certain strategy but it doesn't change what your strategies are and i think that's a really cool aspect of doom they're simple enough that they're easy to pick up and play on your first play uh there's some more complicated ones but for the most part 
you don't need a lot of explanation to figure out what's going on with them. They, they do little things, but they just can change how you would play the game. But like you said, not decide your whole strategy for the course of the game. Talking about, you know, not being set on one path with your faction leader. I feel like there are so many different paths or combinations of paths to victory in this game. You know, whether it's going up the alliance tracks and getting victory points from that or buying a bunch of getting a bunch of intrigue cards and eventually getting victory points from the combats or potentially end of game scoring, there's an extra agent that you can buy. Sometimes that never even crosses my mind and then yeah, other games I'm trying to do that as quickly as I possibly can so that I have that additional automatic third available action every round. Uh, but then there's the deck building aspect. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I, um, actually the other night we played a game and, you know, we've played this game a bunch and I tried a new strategy that I had really never tried before. Right. I, maybe as like a side strategy, um, not, not, but never as my like main, um, path for winning and it was just like it didn't work out very well but it <sighs> i could also see games where if cards had come up differently it would work out right and i just think it's cool that not only are there so many different strategies there's so many different viable strategies like there's there's you know you talked about the influence tracks and the game ends after you reach a round where someone reaches 10 points right well you can get up to eight points just from those influence tracks alone right and so that may seem really powerful but then also from the conflicts if the right cards come up you could get two points from every conflict you win and again like i just like not only the variety of strategies but how they're all viable something that i love is the individual cards so your starting cards, uh, you start out with 10 cards. Some of them are pretty weak, right? But some of the cards that you can buy from the market are pretty powerful. And there's a lot of things that are going on with these cards that makes them super cool and makes this overall such an amazing game. They determine which locations you can go to. They determine abilities or rewards that you might collect if you play them during your agent turns. They also give you potentially rewards that you get when you reveal them. They might give you points towards uh, buying new cards. They might give you spice. They might let you deploy more combat troops. There are times where it's like, okay, I've got some awesome cards in my hand. Which of these cards am I gonna play so that I can use their abilities? Which ones do I wanna hold on to so that I get their rewards during the uh, reveal phase, right? So there are so many just cool decisions going on there. You get more and more buying power as the game goes along, generally, if you build your deck the right way. The cards that you can start to afford become super powerful and super fun. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. Another thing that I love about the cards is um, a lot of the cards fall under a specific like faction. For example, there's a mechanic in the game called Fremen Bond. And if essentially Fremen Bond is if you have another Fremen card in play, you get to activate this ability. Well, that's really cool because you can build an entire deck where you just put load a bunch of car Fremen cards into your deck um, with those Fremen Bond abilities. And then you're constantly chaining extra powers based off um, the allegiances of the cards in your deck. And yeah. I think that's a really cool part of it too. Yeah, and those cards just bring the theme out more and more. It's got a lot of backstabbing, lots of intrigue, lots of deals going on on the side. So uh, it just brings that to life. We've played a ton two-player, right? I love the House Hegel modification for when you play two-player. So it's basically when the starting player takes their agent action each turn, after that, you flip over a House Hegel card or use the app, and it flips a card, and it determines where uh, the House Hegel's agent might go to, which now blocks it from other players going to. But then it also might add combat troops to the combat, which oftentimes there are rounds where House Hegel wins it. Sometimes when you go down to two players, games can lose quite a bit. I think this does a good job of just adding that extra what this game needs to each round in a two player game without adding too much overhead. It is very simple and very quick. One thing I really like about the House Hegel too is that whoever has the most influence on an influence track gains the allegiance with that faction, which is worth victory point. Well, House Hegel can also gain influence with those um, factions yeah. and steal an allegiance from you that you previously had, yeah. which loses you victory points. And it, it it's not opponent. good for like your overall chances of victory, but... It's kind of it's kind of awesome to like think about it like oh <laughs> I I just got bought out by <laughs> this other uh, competing house and 
Yeah, and yeah it, it's it's a cool feature. And again, there's almost no ho- overhead there. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. The the two player game I really enjoy. Anything else that comes to your mind that you? Yeah. So, um, in the movies, at least I, I haven't read the books, but in the movies, they uh, kind of made it a stress that there's limited resources on Dune, that it's very hard to get resources. I feel like that's represented really well in this <laughs> yeah. game because I have played games before where like. I got maybe one, maybe two spice the entire game. Like I just could not, like my strategies were based elsewhere. I could not generate spice at all, right? And I I really like that if you want to have a resource, like at easy access, you really have to put forth effort, sometimes spend money. A lot of times you're spending resources to gain resources, which is really cool. Um, But then occasionally there's also that time where like you didn't plan right and you didn't have the resources that you needed to do something, which again, isn't very good for you, but I think it definitely represents the theme of the books and the movie really well. Yeah. I think there's only one spot that you can go to that actually gives you water. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it's a Fremen spot. One thing that is cool too, is that you can, um, you need to spend water to gain lots of spice at once. You can also sell lots of spice to gain money and then spend money to like get troops to um, put into the conflict which, and win battles, which a lot of times if if you're not able to do that, you're missing out on a lot of potential um, benefits from at least participating, if not getting first place in these conflicts. Yeah. And there, there are ways to add troops to the combat here and there a little bit, but the one spot that costs six spice you get to add like five troops and that's just okay you you're essentially usually going to win that round's combat right oh and that spot actually gives you two water so no, that it does. That's two, right. two spots that give yeah. you water but yeah the turns really go by pretty quick uh the flow of play is really quick i mean we you and i can play a two-player game in an hour and um you know that obviously bumps up when you go to a little bit higher player count or if someone's new to the game but it moves really fast, and I, I really like that. I, I like that there's also this, you know, it's a worker placement game, and it, it adds that uh, aspect of where, oh, no, Logan went where I was going to go to. Now now what do I do, you know? Uh, or I, I need to go to this space. Logan's got a ton of spice over there. I got to go to the space that gives me all the troops uh, with the spacing guild so that he doesn't get it and win this round's combat. I don't know. There are so many different paths to victory with this game. Uh, you know, getting an extra agent, using the Mentat, building a really strong deck of cards. There's been a couple games, and I'll just mention this really quick, where I thought I had the game in the bag, and then I couldn't score a point in that round, and then I could I only scored one point in the next round. Logan scored like four or five, and then ended up winning. So, I don't know. There's times where you start out this game and you feel like, oh man, I got nothing going a few rounds in and then things start to click and you start to find your path of whatever it is. You find your way. And I don't feel like the game's ever truly lost. So actually another thing that I really like about this game, I would say this game does a really good job at creating like epic moments because my dad kind of used it as an example earlier where he said, oh, Logan has a lot of spice. I better go to that space before he can spend it and add a bunch of troops, right? Well, we actually had a game recently where that was the exact case. It was really valuable conflict. We were both really close in power level in the conflict, right? Um, And I had a lot of spice. I had enough spice to go there. And my dad went there and said he also had enough spice. He deployed all the troops and he thought he would won the conflict. Yeah, right? I did. I and thought I had it. I had an intrigue card that said I could send my agent to spaces blocked by other agents. You and did. when I turned that over, it was just like this epic moment <laughs> yeah. where he realized that I was still going to win the conflict. And it was just, well, yeah, it was you awesome. had like three other intrigue cards that you played that round too that helped you in that battle. And it, it just lined up perfectly for you yeah that was awesome it it does create some really fun moments like that so there's two expansions there's rise of x and immortality we both love those expansions dune imperium uprising a standalone game has been announced something that's really cool about that is the expansions can be played with either of the games 
I think that's really exciting. And hopefully, if any new future expansions come out, they will be compatible with both base games. You can find Dune Imperium on Amazon, 51 bucks. Uh, I believe it's on Miniature Market for 50 uh, there's other online game stores that it's right around 50, 55 bucks. I just want to say thank you to Logan to being on this episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed listening to it. This closes out our snapshot of Dune Imperium. Totsins. Sayonara. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to check out our full-length episodes. We discuss games that we've been playing, do deep dives and feature reviews, share top five lists on a variety of board game topics, and discuss all things board game related. For even more Longest Turn, check out our Discord server, Board Game Geek Blog and Guild, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to support the show, buy us some wooden eggs on buymeacoffee.com. All links and information are included in the show notes. Thanks for listening. Is this game a good fit for you and your friends? Bull. Is this game a good fit for your friends and family? Stick around to get your... Th- Bull. We'll give a short overview... Bull. Between the... Oh, I can't breathe.